The main difficulty with playing non-Steam games on your Steam Deck is that these non-Steam games don't have access to Steam Cloud, and as such, you don't have a way to sync your save data. But with this video today, we aim to solve all of that. Welcome back to the Steam Deck Masterclass. This is Volume 19. It's been a while, hasn't it? And today, I want to sync save data for non-Steam games. But if you like this video or any other video I've made, please like, subscribe, and spread the good gospel of high-tech lowlife. Doing this will help me out in the YouTube algorithm and help my channel grow, so yeah. Before we get started, you should save all of your data, back it up, preferably on an external drive. This guide shouldn't result in the deletion of your save data, but if you care about your save data, save yourself the heartbreak and back it up. If you lose any of your data because of this tutorial, or perhaps more accurately because you mess up the tutorial, I'm not responsible, okay? So now let's talk about the star of today's video, Sync Thing. Sync Thing is the linchpin that keeps everything together, and so we're gonna do exactly that to begin with. It's it's an easy way to get familiar with sync thing. So on your Steam Deck, you'll need to be in desktop mode, and once in desktop mode, you'll need to launch Discover and then search for Sync Thing, and then you'll see an application called Sync Thing GTK. If you've never used Sync Thing before, it'll bring up this wizard. The wizard is self-explanatory until you get to step four set up web UI. This will be the most important decision you'll ever make for sync thing. Do you only want it to work locally or would you like to sync files over the internet, say away from your home? If you want to sync over the internet, you'll want to select listen to all interfaces. And in this case, you'll want to set a user and password. So do that and then you'll be done. And so now you have sync thing ready on your Steam Deck. Now let's set it up on another computer, say your Windows desktop. The process should be very similar for Mac, but I don't have a Mac to test this on, so yeah. So now that it's set up on both my Steam Deck and my PC, it's time to set up synchronization. With SyncThing, there are two available user interfaces you can actually use. You can either use SyncThing GTK or SyncThing the web UI. SyncThing GTK is more convenient as an actual program, but you can access the web UI by going to 127.0.0.1 colon 8384, cause that's the default port that SyncThing communicates over. And yes, it's the same process for the Steam Deck as well as your main desktop. Note that you have to actually be at these physical devices, like at your computer or at your Steam Deck. Typically with either SyncThing GTK or the web UI, you need a device ID to synchronize devices. It's a 56 character code. Yes, you could type all of this out, but honestly typing it out is crazy. You can pull this menu up by going to actions and then going to show ID and it'll show you an ID as well as a QR code. Now, because the Steam Deck doesn't have a camera, and I guess neither does my computer, I can't actually make use of the QR code. But this device ID can be sent by email or by SMS if so desired. Another big question is, are these device IDs safe to parade around the internet, especially if you have global discovery on? And according to SyncThing, knowing a device ID won't do much by itself, especially since you have to give authorization. But of course, surveillance parties like the NSA can figure out that you're using SyncThing, and parties that know your device ID can figure out your IP address, so always be careful. But again, SyncThing claims that you can't be hacked just from people knowing your device ID. But on the web UI, the device can actually show up by itself. It'll be a long blue link. Once you click on it, it'll automatically be added, but you will need to edit details later, especially if you plan on having more than one device use sync thing. And of course, on your Steam Deck, you'll get a notification asking if you want to connect it or not. If you want to connect it, press accept device. You could also press the add button on sync thing, and it'll pull up this dialog right here. Device ID will auto populate, and this is where you would put your device ID. And since it's auto-populated, don't edit it at all. Also here is device name. And in device name, you'll want to change the name of your device. Pretty simple, at least. I would leave addresses as dynamic and compression at metadata only. And of course, once it's paired, you're ready. So now I want to try syncing a game that has save data, a game that doesn't have Steam Cloud support despite actually being on Steam. That is, a game called Starbound. The saves are actually cross-compatible between Windows and Linux, and I've confirmed this in the past. Starbound save data can become gigantic. And yes, the file size gets bigger as you explore more planets and even explore more parts of the galaxy. Honestly, it's a pretty good justification for not having cloud saves, but I don't care. I want cloud saves and we're gonna do it ourselves. The first step is to recognize where your save datas are located. 
This is different for every game, and a great resource for finding this out is the PC Gaming Wiki. But in the case of Starbound, Starbound save data is located in the game's directory, in a folder called Storage. And yes, the same applies to the Linux version. And yes, the idea is to synchronize the contents in the storage folder of both devices. And yes, the next steps can be done in either SyncThing GTK or the SyncThing Web UI itself. You want to press Add Folder. You'll see this menu right here. Folder label is the optional label for this folder. You'll name it whatever you want. In this case, it'll be known as Starbound Save. Folder path is the folder that you want to share. Yes, the entire path. And this is what it'll look like after you do everything. The folder ID is the identifier used to tie folders together across multiple different systems. And honestly, I kind of just leave it like that. Then you'll want to move over to the next tab, Sharing. You should see all synchronized devices. In this case, I have just the Steam Deck. So just press the check mark on the Steam Deck and you'll be good to go. File versioning and ignore patterns are both more advanced features, so we can worry about those later. And you'll want to make sure the folder type is send and receive. The idea is that any changes we make to the storage folder, you know, playing the game, doing whatever on either computers, makes changes and then sends those changes to the other computer and vice versa. What this means is when I play the game on my PC, when I save the game and modify the world and whatever, it gets saved and those changes get sent over to my Steam Deck. And if I play my Steam Deck and then continue from there and then save the world elsewhere, those changes get sent over to my PC. And then once you're done with this, just press save and then you'll be done with this computer at least. So now you'll want to go over to your Steam Deck and you'll get a notification asking if you want to accept the folder called Starbound Save. Half the work is already done for you. Of course, you need the folder path on the Steam Deck. And yes, as you can see here, I copy pasted the entire directory. And if you're going to use SyncThing GTK, also ensure that Send Only Folder and Receive Only Folder are disabled. It's a weird little quirk where they put both of those as check marks. If you want the storage folder to send and receive files, then you'll want both of those to be unchecked. Weird and unintuitive, I know, but that's the way it is. Depending on your internet connection, it may take a bit to sync files over, but as you can see here, now there's my save data. It's on the Steam Deck now. Yes, you can even observe this happening in real time. As you can see here, I started a brand new save for Starbound. And I'm not sure if you noticed this or not, but I've been streaming my Steam Deck to my main PC. And oftentimes, this is how I use keyboard and mouse on my Steam Deck without having to break out another keyboard and mouse, you know? It's also a good way to illustrate this change in real time. So the save folder just populated with a player folder. And soon that should be showing up on the Steam Deck as well. Oh, hey, it just showed up just now. Did you see that? That's crazy. Yes, it may take longer to sync depending on how slow your internet is, but in my case, I have pretty decent internet. I've got gigabit ethernet and Wi-Fi 6 around the house. So all in all, I would say, yes, I'm doing pretty good. And we're gonna fast forward this a bit because this takes a while to load for whatever reason. Yes, you can play with the settings so that things sync a lot faster, but honestly, I don't find that necessary because I'm not playing on both the Steam Deck and my main PC at the same time. But as you can see here, my folders and files and such have populated in real time. It shows up first on my PC, of course, because I'm playing on my PC, and then later it'll show up on my Steam Deck even after I exit the game. So I'm going to save this new character in this exact location, in front of what looks like a bunker of sorts. So yeah, we just proved that sync thing works. Well, works in desktop mode, but what about game mode? It's a very simple method that I, uh, regrettably forgot to record myself, but the instructions are right here. It essentially involves adding SyncThing as a service and then running that service automatically whenever you boot your Steam Deck, even behind the scenes in, say, game mode. Yes, that means all the syncing happens behind the scenes. Of course, this by itself won't let you make any changes in game mode. You would either need to use a web UI in game mode or perhaps add SyncThing GDK to game mode. But in terms of of just the syncing functionality, it works. There will be a link to these written instructions in the description down below. So now let's launch Starbound. Remember, Starbound doesn't have Steam Cloud functionality. And as you can see right here, it's already a promising start. My character is there and they're in the place they were before crazy. Yes, I'm using Steam Remote Play to stream my Steam Deck to my PC. So yes, this is running on my Steam Deck. My save data transferred over. Great. And yes, these basic principles can be applied to emulation. Yes, 
you can transfer emulation save data between devices. EmuDeck has a pretty decent guide on their website, and Rust from Retro Game Corp made an excellent video on this, though admittedly that was more for retro handhelds. But I'm about to do something practically unthinkable, setting sync thing up with my file server. This is more of a proof of concept than an actual tutorial for setting up your own file server though, because, well, quite frankly, most people don't have file servers. And those that use file servers with software like Unraid or Proxmox could probably figure this out very easily. So I have this tiny little file server here called the LinkStation N1, and it's a NAS, an all SSD NAS I might add. I made a full review on this, so be sure to check it out. So the main reason why I'm using this file server as opposed to my other big server I have downstairs is that this is running Unraid. So yes, on top of this being my general file server that I edit videos off of, as well as my own media server that I can play movies off of using Jellyfin, it'll also act as a sync thing server in which my save data will be uploaded to this server. Using Unraid makes things stupidly simple. I can just get the sync thing docker container right here. I will say this does require basic knowledge of docker and honestly that's going to take forever. But anyways for anyone trying to replicate this on their own Unraid setup, the big difficulty here is figuring out what host path 2 should be in which it should just be a like share that you have available. And yes, you can access your server's instance of sync thing by going to your server's IP address, followed by the port supplied. And for the folder path, you'll just want to put slash media slash your folder name. If you ever need to access your server's files, you can always just enable SMB and go into it directly via Unraid. And yes, as you can see here, my file server is backing up my PS3 saves. Simply unthinkable. Not only do I have sync things syncing my files between all of my gaming devices, but also to a centralized server. If I had to be honest, I don't really expect people to do the server portion of this video. But it was something I wanted to do because, well, simply put, I could. So there we have it. Sync thing set up. But are there any caveats to sync thing? Aside from some minor privacy issues if you decide to sync over the internet? Not particularly. Well, there is one issue. If you decide to sync between just your Steam Deck and your PC, in order to sync things between the two devices, both devices have to be on at the same time. So you can't like play a game on your PC, turn your PC off, and then later on turn your Steam Deck on and expect it to be synced. Both devices have to be on at the same time. It's part of why I set up sync thing on my server. Because the expectation is my server will always be on. But it might actually be possible to set this up over like Amazon AWS, in case you have that. But honestly, I don't want to pay for Amazon AWS to test that out. I'm just testing on my server because I happen to have a server. And honestly, it's such a good use case that I'm going to keep it on my server forever. And maybe you should get one too. If you like this video, please press the like button and check out our other videos. And if you like those other videos as well, be sure to press the subscribe button and share the good gospel of high tech low life with your friends. Furthermore, we have a community discord for enlightened individuals such as you. And if you wish to further support high tech low life, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Links in the description.